Right. So we tried to stay at the table. No one else came along to meet us. And we're going to see who else is around to play with. There's quite a delay between when I say something and when it's recorded in the broadcast. Hope it's not going to confuse anything if I post to video like this. Sorry. I'm going to go with the higher stakes here for fairly obvious reasons. Okay, we could have met the sailor earlier at the wayfarer's rest, I believe. Um, just to let you know, he's not quite as random a character as you can see. In fact, all the gamblers in the hall are characters you can see elsewhere in the city. is making the game lag out a bit. Hope it doesn't mess anything up. And the eye generally doesn't bluff on its first bet, so I'm going to take him at his word and hope I don't regret it. God damn it. Sorry for not trying to pronounce whatever he's trying to say there. I couldn't if I tried, I can barely even read it. Personally, I generally restart a dice game if I lose the first die. Uh, you are unlikely to come back from that. So, this is probably my first time actually playing for a full game uh, without cheating or rebinding. It's a shame that the chat comments don't actually appear to me unless I check for them manually. Annoying. 
Not quite how I would have done it, but hell. There are a lot of things about Steam that aren't quite how I would have done it. Take a long time. Oh yeah, you go back to the starting point every time you change tables, or most of the time at least. No, no, no. Another character we could have met elsewhere. Left, <laughs> probably. Let me tell you, the short, high-stakes games, they, uh, they're fairly exciting. It's my heart is kind of pounding, well, to an extent. As I said before, I don't generally stay put during these games. I never knew you'd change the type of game if you're stuck at the same table. Odd. Wonder if the stakes have changed. Now, the mount is a character you highly unlikely to see unless uh, you go out of your unless you go out of your way to explore the city into a section that you really don't need to be in. Have you noticed how when he replied he, his text basically blinked for a while? It means the eye was contemplating whether or not to call my blood. Always exciting, and uh, it indicates a few things about the way the AI thinks. I have a bit of a lecture in mind, but uh, it's not well formed enough to actually speak about it properly. said there are some things you can more or less rely on the eye to do for one thing to accept any reasonable uh, first uh, claim you make so I generally claim I have uh, some number of dice I don't actually have and the eye won't hold you on it and may act on it in the future that's a good simple way to win the game usually The other thing is that the AI generally won't bluff about their first game either, but they may um, make a reasonable assumption. We both have five dice, maybe he has only one three and can reasonably assume I have at least one other, or maybe he has two, well, no, he has four dice, but 
Maybe he rolled two threes, or maybe he's assuming I have one. So the question is, do I call it five threes or six threes? Do I accept his fame at face value, or do I uh, underplay it just a bit? So again, how much is he bluffing? How much is he assuming? He probably doesn't have three twos, but I have two twos, so I can call his bluff. Mm, let's see. Ah, uh, that might have been a mistake. Okay. Someone in the Steam thread, talking about Red Dead Redemption, which I never played, said that Liar's dice are the best new game because they're basically translating a real-life dice game, which is just complicated enough. So yeah, I have fun with it as well. It's interesting, we learn a few things about the Blacklands while exploring the city, while talking to people, but they don't register as close properly, just things to keep note of or forget. Background lore, basically. I never really know what to get if I have five dice and basically one of everything. Mm. Can't really bluff the AI in that kind of situation. Doesn't matter when he only has one die, but still. to the market and I thought there was something to put in the market. Alright, so the stakes were in fact 10 dollars. That's nice. Alright, we have 50 now. More than enough to buy the soul, assuming the game allows us to backtrack, which I'm not going to say one way or the other. Some characters leave, the sailor specifically, which is a good thing because I hate trying to figure out what I was trying to say. And a red eye arrives. I don't think we actually know what red eyes are. Yeah, it's basically just that. Oh. 
So either he has one free in there, in which case I'm fucked, or... Yeah. See? Always, always bluff the eye about dice you don't actually, mm -hmm. haven't actually rolled as your first move. It helps quite a great deal. Okay, and yeah, red eyes are assholes, and they have ways to scar us to the bones, ostensibly. Something to remember. should do any suggestions questions something to answer something to talk about I believe characters will eventually leave the home. I'm not sure if it depends on how much you win, how often you win against them. Any number of factors could be the case. I know you can win at least 100 gold here, and uh, the third part will actually account for it. Prices, etc., will change if you have too much gold as you start the game. That is not the case here though. Prices within the city will remain the same and we'll be able to buy pretty much everything if we win enough here or during various dice games. Yeah, I keep playing the exact same move at the start of the game. Uh, some of the opponents in the third part will call you on it, catch up to it if you keep trying uh, 
to blast them that way, but not here. Any questions about the game in general? Oh, I can see. Um, chat up in the lower left corner. Up in the left corner. Why am I so confused right now? Mostly because I'm trying to think about a number of things at once while also recording, while also having my own voice and feedback, which is kind of confusing. Uh, okay, the fraps come from the coins is kind of shot. explore what we're trying to do right now thing I dislike about the house is that people keep moving away when you find a good game. And you keep going down by the stakes. That is to say, you start with a game that has 10 for stakes and a short, which is perfect. Your opponent loses, he moves to a cheaper table. That game is gone. Much as you have liked to continue it.
said, the eye does an awesome job. It kind of does. It's quite annoying. The red eye is in fact the best player in the room. whether your answers actually tell your opponent anything, whether they occasionally call not based on the dice numbers but based on what you say. But yeah. Well, it's well past time for us to lose one. That's what the red eyes are all about. Something to keep in mind for later on. Huh. I generally found that once you start losing dice, it's very hard to make a comeback. So congratulations on that. See, that was the best bet he could have made. It made perfect sense. It's what happens when you rely on the AI to be stupid. Let's hope that one's not a bluff. I played to this twice. Thank you. Dreda is the one opponent in the game who can actually bluff about his initial um yeah. The eye will not often pull the move I keep pulling. Just throw out the number da 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 da. I wish I knew the technical term for it. Say you've rolled some dice that you totally don't have and that it would seem reasonable but would fuck up the eyes the opponent's assumption of what dice are in play. The sort of thing I can play, the blind, turn it doesn't, and this guy, except for the red eye, and that happens more often in the third game. Now, back to this.
if you may be stuck against this guy for quite a while. That would be unfortunate. Trailing wings back and forth. Fuck it. Huh. Well, even the best AI players can make really stupid moves, or maybe the game took mercy on me. We have 80 gold. Do we set some kind of a goal? Are we playing until a certain uh, number is reached or until we're done with every character in the halls? really taking a pity on me today because I'm making um, really poor bets and a bit too tired right now to think straight and it's paying off the eye is making even stupid moves in turn
this might be coming to an end. A few characters have left behind by now, no one else is coming in. We are almost done here. things about the adaptation yeah we really need that money for whatever spare ingredients and so forth uh, one of the many nice things about the adaptation is the inclusion of many new many a few new female characters and the expansion of the few who are present in the original Books. Original books are pretty much sausage fests. So that's nice. Uh, we're done to the two gold stakes. Yeah, it's almost over. was a profitable power set, Jesus Christ. That's the one problem, it takes quite a while to make all this money. Fun, but still. Oh, these are the worst possible fans, you can't really bluff because you have one of everything.
I do I do wonder whether uh, people who aren't playing along with the game who haven't purchased it, who haven't played a lot of uh, Lyra's Dice are actually following the logic of uh, my bets here what I'm trying to do, what the AI is trying to do how the AI is messing it up because it's quite remarkably stupid for the most part intentionally so in a lot of cases uh, like re the red eye is why they know an opponent because it plays the way a human would. Other AI opponents make stupid mistakes that are probably intentional. When I'm posting about the game on the thread, I generally. Oh, no, not anymore. During the first game, I tried to explain every single one of my moves. Not so much here. Pure laziness, or the reasonable assumption that people don't understand what I'm trying to do at this stage. I'm not sure if I need to explain the combat system all over again or just give up on playing it through the thread and just play it myself and, I don't know, penalize people if they left off a signal solution at full combat. I have quite a bit of fun with the combat system, but I don't know, maybe it's impossible to explain without experiencing it for yourself. I've looked over. Uh, I've looked over the reviews on the Steam page for this game, and some of them are uh, quite baffled by the combat system, which I found more fun, and by the rewind system, which I found incredible. It appeals to every single of my uh, safe world scum instincts. But people are like, oh, I have to keep replaying every combat until I. Mean, do it perfectly, or I have to keep rewinding every encounter until I get it perfectly. Well, whose fault is that but your own? But apparently, that's a flaw of the game. Congratulations, we now have 96 gold, we've beaten every single other character, every single other player, well done, raise a glass, you know, uh, blow a trumpet, do 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 do, that sort of thing. And we're done with this for the moment, now for the moment forever. Or, um, well, spoiler alert, we may or may not be done with this. <laughs> God, that was a perfect ending to this broadcast, which was incredibly mumbly and ill-rehearsed. 
Hope you had fun. I'll see you when I'll see you next time. I'll, I'll